Hello, this is uh, Adrian Ramirez from vidibooks.com, care of JRB Good Solutions, and we're here to talk about effective entrepreneurial action. We're here uh, about talking about writing the vision down, and we're here to discuss a topic here for our listeners. It's for those that want to be have their own business. Maybe they thought about it. The Bible says to write the vision down. And I'm here with uh, author Jim Riggin that has wrote a book, and that book has helped me to understand about being going into business. It gave me an overview and started me thinking around that path. So here is uh, author Jim Riggin. Hi, how are you doing? And yes, this is author James Regan. I'm in my house right now. And uh, we both, Pastor Adrian and myself, we, we, we are uh, uh, online marketers. We're learning about marketing. We're also authors. And we make, uh, right now we're, we have a project where we're making a lot of video books and this will be on a video book. We'll give you an example of how video books work. But, uh, but really the content of this course or this, this little mini course, uh, mini video, is to, is to help you understand how to proceed in business because quite frankly, business is scary to a lot of people. It, it, it seems uh, mountainous. It seems like, you know, you have your desire and you have your dreams. You know, these are all swimming around in your head. But uh, these desires are not uh, getting concrete. And then you're also, these fears are coming in the way and you think about starting and then something comes in your head. So, well, I don't know. And it's kind of like you talk yourself out of it and then you come back and say, I got to get started on it. I got to do something. And you do this back and forth thing. And so what we're trying to do is help Christians, help brothers and sisters, or anybody for that matter, to uh, gain a little perspective on how do you approach business real? Because you don't just jump in the booth. Today I'm going to start a business. I think I'm going to make an ice cream shop. Or I'm going to start a, uh, a hairstyling. That's right. I, I'm into hair. But you go out there and all of a sudden, if, you, if you're if you not prepared in your mindset, in your in, in your your equipment, things that you need, if you don't know what you need, you're going, you're going to go through a long-term process of a lot of struggle. <clears throat> and that struggle can get depressing. Okay? So what we're here today is to try to help you get through that struggle to make it easier in the struggle and to give you an understanding of where the starting point is, okay? Because God's promised prosperity to his saints. God has promised prosperity to his people, okay? And he's going to send it from heaven. He's going to pour his blessings down. He is going to facilitate this. But we have to do our part. I mean, when they went into the promised land, God gave them the victory. But they had to do their part. If they didn't do their part, the enemy would come in and start uh, beating up on them. And, and, you know, so in order to gain victory in the promised land, you have to trust God, but move forward. Because God said, go forth into the promised land. He would say, go. It's time for you to cross the Jordan. And right. But if they just stood there and sat there in the camp and just thinking about it, that's not, that's kind of like not obedience as far as Israel's was concerned. No, they stood up and they went. And God promised Joshua, wherever you put your foot upon, I will give you the victory. And guess what? We as a people have already been guaranteed the victory, period. We've already been guaranteed. It's been promised to us. Now, here's the deal. It's time for Gideon's army to start getting to the nitty gritty. Start girding yourself up for battle, girding yourself up. For what's going to come ahead. Now, do you just jump into a business? No. Right? I mean, there's a verse, and I don't remember where it is, but it's in Proverbs, and it talks about gather all your stuff and put it in the field first. Get your equipment, and then build your house. Right? That's what happened with Solomon is uh, uh, he went and asked 
uh, hire them to, uh, for lumber and stuff, and they got all their stuff that they needed. In other words, they planned it, and then they built the house, and they did the foundation first. There's an order to building. You don't, you know, you don't just have had. Oh, I think I'm going to start there. There's an order to things, and yes, a, a business can get a little bit complicated, but it's not that bad. It's not the the fears inside make it look like it's a giant or it's too much, but it's not. Okay. Uh, but, you know, anything that you've never done before is a little scary, okay? But guess what? There's nothing wrong with having some fear in you because, I, you know, I've been fearful myself. But fear gets overcome by faith. Perfect love casts out fear. So, in other words, okay, I see that's inside me, but what can I do to overcome? What can I do to go forward? And guess what? You're not going alone. You're asking God to help you. <laughs> right mm -hmm. that's what's going to make it work is god helping it now let's get down to some business here because we're not going to spend that much time but i do want to show you a definition here and uh can you are you seeing me still because yeah. what i'm going to do is i'm going to share my screen here real quick all right can you see my screen uh yes Okay, what I want you to see here is this is a, a website called investopedia.com. It's kind of like Wikipedia. It's kind of definitions for business. But this is their definition of what is an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is an individual who rather than working as an employee, runs a small business and assumes all the risk and rewards of a given business venture, idea, or good or service offered for sale. Notice the word sale. Okay, any business that exists, whether it's offering services, goods, or both, they will be selling them in some way or fashion. Oh, no, sale. No, no. Well, guess what? You, if you think in terms of salesmen, uh, I don't like pushy salesmen trying to push their products on me, okay? I mean, I've been in some st some stores where, uh, they really, uh, you know, zero in on you, and it's very uncomfortable feeling. But there's also a right way to do things, a right way to provide information, be encouraging, educate, and then the sale will come. So there is a way to do things like that. All right? But what I want, the point that I'm trying to make is every good or service that you do, any kind of business, any kind of dream that you have, you are going to make a sale. Now, the good news is, on the other side of this, is working as an employee, you're working 40 hours a week, and you kind of like have a fixed income. You, you're, you're growing a little bit when you get a raise here and there, but you have a fixed income. You're getting the same amount. I mean, if you get a little overtime, that might be a little different, but pretty much it's the same. But you're stuck by a time parameter. It's paid by the hour, trading your talent for time by the hour. And you only got 24 hours in a day. So there is a limit, okay? Even if you work 16 hours a day and burnt yourself out, there's a limit to what you can do. So as far as by the hour, okay? Now, that's a good place to start, but it's not necessarily a place to stay. Because when you offer products and services, for instance, I heard something on uh, the radio show, Caleb, they were talking about, uh, somebody somebody was making mention of a person who went to a fair and uh, was uh, doing a trampoline, uh, you know, kind of thing. Come to my trampoline in the fair. And there's only like a thousand people a day in there. And he said, well, how much do you think he made a day? And people were saying, oh, $100, $200, $300. Well, he was turning over 10000 a day. Now, so, I mean, if it cost you $2,000 to rent the trampoline, would you not do that every day if you knew it was going to bring 10000 after it was done? Okay, so he, uh, he, the point I'm trying to say is, is if buying and selling is the fastest way to make income, okay, it is the fastest. But the thing is, is when you start a business, it's an uphill curve because nobody knows you. Nobody, nobody knows what you have. Do you have a product? What is your service? Do you even know what you want to do? I mean, there's a lot of factors involved before you start the process. However, it is a doable process, and it's not that hard. 
You just have to be a little diligent about it. You will work a little harder than an employee because, because see, an employee gets paid by the hour so they can kind of slack off a little bit on certain parts of their job and not do a full 100% give. But when you're working for yourself in a business or in a group of people, uh, you get paid based on performance, right? So it's a little bit tougher, but it's also got greater rewards. It just assumes all the risk and rewards, okay? So there is some risk. Oh, no, what if something goes wrong? What if I put $1,000 in and, 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 and uh, you, well, maybe you don't need to put 1000 in. Maybe you can put 100 in. Okay, maybe you can cut those risks down a little bit. But the rewards are there too. People are so much looking at the negatives, they're not thinking about what can happen. And, and, and Zig Ziglar, uh, he was a great entrepreneur. He said that the way that you become wealthy is that instead of trying to sell your stuff to people and trying to do it like that where it's kind of pushy, what you're trying to do is you help people, you solve their problems, you help people get to where they want to go. If, if they want to go from A to B, you help them get to where they want to go. And, and when they get to where they want to go, then they will get you where you want to go. So if you help 10 people get to where they want to go, then guess what? They're going to help you get to where you want to go. And that's how it works. It's a giving thing. Business is giving. Okay. A lot of people think rich people are all stuck up and, and there's some out there that are like that, but there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that are more giving, very giving people because they're not tied up to the whole worry about money and stuff. They've, they've overcome it. And so now they can just give what they want. Okay. So let, so it's not, they're not all that bad. Okay, now, uh, it's, it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's the love of money. Money answers everything. It can give you a lot of ability to do things, okay? But if you have an attitude, and, you know, and you get a lot of money, that can amplify the attitude you have, whether it's a good attitude or maybe not so good of an attitude. So we do have to work on ourselves and make ourselves better for the benefit of other people. Part of our product is us. Part of, you know, it's us. Part of, part of the product is what they see, who, what, what they're going to get, right? And if they see they're getting something of some value, that's a benefit. And then when they're, they see that someone's trying to help you, they're going to go, huh, okay? So now let's, take, let's go take a look at this book. Uh, effective entrepreneur action for a second. This is a book that I wrote. You can get it. Uh, you can get it right here on Amazon. If you type in entre, I know that's a hard word. Entrepreneurial action. You got to put N E U R I L action. Entrepreneurial action. Regan, and you'll get this book, and you can get it for three ninety nine on Kindle, or get it for as a paperback for nine eighty seven. Set so right to your door. Okay, so but here's the deal. We're gonna take a we're gonna take a I'm gonna take a peek into entrepreneurial action right here. Okay, and let's just look at look at the chapters here. Why is it so important to be effective as an entrepreneur? In other words, it's important to learn not just to be an entrepreneur, but how to do it right so you so you you can be effective at what you're doing. You want to have everybody wants to be success. Then it's like moving from dreams to sweet success. Okay, and we'll talk about this in a minute. That's where we're going to focus on. What does it actually take to be successful in business? Now, this chapter kind of like breaks down, uh, you know, how people think about business and what it's going to take. But in reality, uh, there are certain things that have to be accomplished in business. When I was cleaning carpets up in New York, I had to go out there and do stuff. If I didn't do stuff, I didn't get put any food on the table. I had to go out there and, you know, hand out flyers. I had to go talk to people. I had to close the job. I had to go back and clean the carpet. I mean, there was a lot involved. But once you get used to it, it's not that hard. Okay, so it's a matter of setting up a system of what you're doing and then becoming effective at it. 
I, but I, again, I don't want to scare you with that because that's a little further down. This is the bottom line of effective entrepreneurial action, the key elements of effective entrepreneurial thinking. Okay, and it keeps on going on and on. Why not build yourself a bank? That sounds interesting. Now, let's focus on this right here, moving from dreams to sweet success, okay? Now, this is where it gets interesting. This is where you take your dreams and begin making them a reality. I'm sure most of us desire our dreams to become a reality, but if you think about it from beginning to end, that all could be a, quite a tall order for some. Not an impossible order, just a tall one. Why is that? Because a dream is just a dream until you put some legs on it, all right? Thought is not action, it's, con it's, it's potential, it's not kinetic, it's, it's, it, it, it's p possible, but it's not manifested. See, we have to take our dreams and, and put some action into it. Faith is action, right? What did Paul, uh, Jane, who was it, what, uh, Pastor Adrian, who said, I'll show you my faith by my works? Who said that? Was that James? I think, I think it was James. I'll show you my faith by my works. Okay, so, you know, a lot of people are waiting for God to change their life. But God's waiting for us to take a step. Just take one step. <laughs> Just make a move. And I'll, and I'll help you. I'll move you to the next step. We can't, he can't get us to step five if we don't cross the line to step one. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not used to looking at the camera. So forgive me for that. Uh, I'm, uh, but we're going to go on. Uh, can you see the screen, by the way? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So now, how do we truly move from our dreams to sweet success? Because a lot of times they seem way far off, and hope that is deferred. If you think about it, can make the heart sick. All right. So. What you have to do is you have to start thinking about your desires and then write them down. Now you don't put them in order. You don't, you, this is a freestyle thing. This is like, you know, trying to get it out of you. And we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to use, uh, we're going to uh, use Pastor Adrian as a guinea pig here. <laughs> okay. You don't mind me talking a little bit about your dreams, do you? No, no, absolutely not. All right, so what he's going to be doing is kind of writing them down, or maybe uh, what he can say, and then I'll try to write them down. Let me bring up Word real quick. Oh, that, give me a second, because I wasn't planning this. All right. Actually, let's do it easier. Let's do, let's do this one. Okay, I'm gonna open up a new document. Okay, all right, now, okay. In Habakkuk 2.2, Habakkuk 2.2, it says, write the vision down so that thou may run that reads it. So, I mean, yes, that was with respect to prophecy, but it's also with respect to visions. See, writing something down fixates it, 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 it Puts, makes it permanent. It gives it a reference point. It, uh, I think there's a verse that says the word uh, is are, are like firmly written like goads. They're they're like nails. Okay, they're 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 permanent and they're they're permanently fixed in the heavens. Okay, so when we start taking the desires that are swimming around in our hearts what we want to do and put them on paper. And what I'll do, uh, Pastor Adrian, is I'll type them up and then I'll send them over to your email. How's that? All right. But people can see. All right, so we're going to go Pastor Adrian's desires, okay? And we're going to go through this quick. Okay, now, what I want you to do, if you ever saw the movie The Bucket List or – uh, you know, I remember talking about this one, you know, oh, if I won the lottery and uh, not that we, okay, we, uh, I'm just saying, and I had all this money after we, you know, 
had fun and and went on a vacation or two and 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 settled down them and said okay what am i going to do with all this money and you you know people don't think about it and they just start spending right that's not a good way to to have money is to just start spending money it better is uh uh is to plan it out have a have some kind of a plan about this so you know where you're going if you know you need uh, if if you're going to plan a trip to New York or maybe uh, maybe you want to go to Seattle, okay, from Texas. We're in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, if I was to say, uh, Adrian, hey, me and Miriam want to go to Seattle. Adrian, you want to come with us? We're just going to hop in the car and go, right? And we start driving, but we don't know where it is. We don't. We kind of know where it is, but we don't know how to get there. Do you, do you think we might make a few mistakes? Oh yeah, I think you think make a might, lot of mistakes. Uh, do you, you think we might be like Dumb and Dumber and end up going mm. in the wrong direction? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going in the complete wrong direction. Okay, <laughs> we, we, we miss the signs and the turns and then we go on for hours and we're not even going, see it's better to know where you're going and so you can number one, know where you're going and at the same time, measure where you are with respect to where you were, where you started. In other words, there's a way to see how you're progressing, right? Because if you don't know that you're progressing, it's going to be, it, it might be discouraging. It might, you know, oh, man, I keep on doing this and nothing seems to be happening. Well, what if you know that you're halfway done? That's going to give you a little more hope. So, I mean, it's like the brain likes to talk negative, And so we got to, you know, write the vision down that thou may run that reads it. So you got to read it again and again. Read your vision. All right. So, Adrian, tell me what kind. All right. You have, uh, how old are you? I'm 43. 43. So let's say uh, you're going to live to 85. Okay. So you got 42 years left. What's 42 times 365? Let's see. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Um, 42. Eight, no, 43. 85 minus 42 is, is 43. Give me an extra year there. Uh, 365. Okay. Uh, equals. Yeah, why did I do that? Hmm. Maybe I need to do it up here. 43 times 365. Yep. No. Okay. Ah. I'll do it. I'm sorry for that. I wasn't planning on this, but that's what happens on a live training. Notice how you can just about find anything online. It's a freebie there. Okay, was it 43 times 365? And on leap years, it's one extra day. That's how many days, if you live to 85 or more, you have 15,695 days. Okay. Now, when you look at that, you go, wow, that's not all that much. <laughs> <laughs> right i mean it's a lot just not all that much no. and so, you know when you hear verses like make the most of the time for the days are evil we got only so much we got a limited amount of time on this earth how do we want to use our hours right watching five or six hours of tv nonstop, or you know i mean the reason why we do a lot of idle things or, or just passing the time is because we're not focused we're not going anywhere you ever hear that song? Sitting on the dock of the bay. Ah, watching the waves roll away. Watching the, sh I don't know if I'm singing it right. Watching the ships come in and then the waves go rolling out again. I probably messed up the song. But we're just sitting here wasting time. And that become a number one bestseller. <laughs> right, but it may, may have been a good song but it doesn't help people get to where they want to go. Now, do you have to be this 
workaholic person and, 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 you know, become like a Martha Martha, you can become like that. Some business people become like that, but you don't have to be. If you walk with Jesus, he'll help you to gather little by little and you'll take steps and eventually you'll get to where you, you're going on your, on your entrepreneurial trip. Okay, now, so let's get back to Adrian. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this quickly now. All right, Adrian, what kinds of things would you like? Now, I'm going to get personal here. I want you to break it down into two categories. I want you to, what kinds of things would you like to see you getting for yourself in the next few years? Desires that you want to get. And two, what kinds of things do you want to accomplish? Well, the desires that I want to get is I want to be debt free of my house, of my car, and everything that I own. House? car, everything. Why do you want to do that? So that way I could be free. Free for, to, to do what? Financial freedom to do the things that I want to do. What kinds of, okay. And that's uh, like, I would like to evangelize all over the world. <laughs> I would like to say, okay, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to Haiti. So I'm going to get on my personal plane and I'm going to go there. Personal plane? Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> can I go there? <laughs> Make it big enough. <laughs> big guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what else? What else do you want to uh, do? Do you just want to go to Haiti? Do you have other places? You I'd go all over the world. What do you, why do you want to go all over the world? What's your to see To see the world. I, I haven't been out of Texas Okay. Only once or twice I've been out that's, of Texas. That's kind of like your selfish motive to see mm -hmm. the world. It's not bad to be self. It's your desire for self. It's not a bad thing. It's, it, it, you know, we all have desires that we want to accomplish. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. But you said evangelize all the world. Why do you want to evangelize? So that the people could hear the gospel. The, the Bible says to go to all the world and preach the gospel. So you want to, uh, okay. Fulfill the Great Commission. Okay, so you want to add souls to the kingdom of God. Yes. Uh -huh. By the way, uh, that's exactly what Brother uh, Pastor Adrian and me are doing, is we're making one of the aspects of Biddy Books is we are looking to help people come into the uh, kingdom of God. So part of our Biddy Books are going to be like video tracks, you know, people with bitty books, they don't, they don't want to read too much, but if you have a little bit of reading and a little bit of video, that can get inside of people and they can open doors to, uh, to witnessing into the kingdom. And all right. Now, uh, what other things would you like to accomplish? Uh, I would like to uh, maybe help people that need it, help people get on their feet. Give them opportunities. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Two new T's. Okay. So, you want to you wanna be like that guy, that picture where Jesus is lifting his hand down to reach down to lift somebody up. Kind yes. Of. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, now, uh, and you want to be used by God, of course, to spread the gospel and perhaps some, well, and that people get healed. Yes. Okay, so you want to do that. Now, are there other things you want? I mean, you know, this is kind of like, let, uh, you know, taking our shirt off. I mean, you know, it's it's like I know you're in public and all that, but. Uh, you know, what kinds of other things do you, would you like to have? Would you like to uh, accomplish, have, do while you're here on this earth? Basically, just to help other people. Be here to be a, a witness for other people. A servant and a witness. Mm -hmm. so you, don't, you don't want to go, you said you wanted to go all over the world to see the world. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, what places would you like to go first? Uh, Jerusalem. I always wanted to visit Jerusalem. Okay, what else? Uh, Rome. 
uh, maybe uh, Hawaii. <laughs> okay. Um, just all over, wherever you know you, well, you watch I mean, TV. Stick out. Have you thought about play? That would be a nice place to go to, or maybe I'd want to go there. You know, if I ever got a chance to. Yeah. Uh, Africa, visit the continent of Africa. When that came into my mind. I already knew you were going to say <laughs> Africa is such a big continent. <laughs> I wanted you to say it. <laughs> yeah, right, Germany, so, uh, Italy, France, you know. France, okay. Uh, Europe, maybe, a little Italy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Rome. Oh, yeah, definitely Rome. See, definitely. Did you hear that, everybody? <laughs> that, that, that desire was already in him. <laughs> That's the whole thing is we got desires in us, but we don't even see them. They're just swimming around uh, in this fog, and they come up like a whale coming up for uh, air, and then they go back down into the deep. So this is what gets our getting our vision out. Uh, now, how much do you feel you need to make in uh, a month to get financially free. Let's see here. Well, uh, as far as a goal that you would like to set, I you, would like to yes, say yes, can. <laughs> <laughs> we're setting a destination, just like going on a trip. I would like to say so. Uh, I would like to say about five thousand dollars a month. Okay, a minute, five thousand plus a month. Plus a month, yes. Okay. This is after you got things paid off? Yes, uh huh. Okay. Um, is there any schooling, education, or specific things that you would like to do before you leave this earth? As far as schooling? Okay. No, I haven't thought about that. Okay, that's okay. But, but is it possible? It's possible. Okay. Uh, how about your family? Do you have things about your family you would like to do for that? I would like to take care of my father and make sure he doesn't have to worry about bills or medical bills or things of that nature. He doesn't have to struggle. Care, kind of like a care provider or a, you know. yes mm -hmm. okay uh, and you probably want to get married and have kids yes. <laughs> one day I will get married and I will have kids yeah by the way he's he's a, a very uh, reliable and and straightforward man he I mean so if you're looking there he is. <laughs> Free advertisement there. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, so you see how now what Adrian's vision is his vision. My vision will be different. There'll be similarities, but there'll be differences. Right? I I one of my things I want to have is I want to have seven houses and I want uh, different places in the world. And I also want to have one of the best computer, you know, recording studio kind of, I mean, really set up to, to really get it done, you know, uh, in, 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 in the best that can be. So I'm, I'm into that. And I, and I like that. Uh, I, you know, I, you know, as you get older, things don't matter as much to you as they used to. You know, things get old. So it's like the things that matter are things that last. And, you know, so it's okay to have things and do things, but we also have to prepare for eternity. But while we're here on the earth and while we're gathering people in the kingdom, right? And we're trusting God. We could also, you know, Paul had his own business. He he mended tents. I know that's in the Bible somewhere. He mended tents. So he had his own business while he preached the gospel. So uh, 
it, it's just that we we're not we're not necessarily looking to become Donald Trump. And I mean, he's really going past his dreams. He's now president of the United States, and I give him honor for doing what he's doing. By the way, because I know some of you might not like him, but quite frankly, he's doing a lot of good things for the country. He's just helping us out. And he's looking. He's not looking at it like a politician. He's looking at it like, how can I help the American people out? Because he remembers America, and so do I. America's not the same as it used to be. But getting back on track here, um, it's very important. See, it only took about 15, 20 minutes to write this vision down. And this vision can be modified. Maybe you'll think, oh, I didn't think about that. And then you write it back in. You add to your plan. And see, then after you write your plan, then you can start setting goals. Well, how long, is, how long do I want to spend before I make, how, how, how many, how long do I have to work or do things before I start making 5,000 a month? What's my goal, right? Six months, a year, two years, right? So you, you start, what you're doing is you're starting to make things concrete and you're making things manifest in reality. And you've got something to pray about now. You got, it's not swimming around in your head. All right, it's 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 on paper, and you've written it down, and now you can run when you read it, okay? And then you can make sub plans. You could, okay, you could say, uh, okay, I want to accomplish all this in five years, or within ten. I want to do all this stuff in ten years. So, what do you want to do for your first year, Avery? <laughs> Well, you definitely get debt free and get free of my job. <laughs> well, first, first step is get free of your job. Mm -hmm. Make more money in my business than my job, so that way I can do my business and my job. I'll get free. Okay, so you can get free. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's it's it, 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 it's when you start something new, you have to put in more energy than you are. But once you get it going, you know, and once you start bringing actual income in, uh, then it actually takes you where it goes. Now, I'm going to give you something really interesting. Right? If you had something that you charge ten dollars for now ten dollars isn't a lot right right ten dollars right for x and it's a good x make it a y it could be a y too it could be a y the reason why you're doing it but you could have more than one you could have an x y and z you could have three products right or a service but the point is is one round is ten dollars. Now, how much is a thousand times ten? Ten thousand. So, you mean you would only have to get ten, one thousand people to purchase what you have, whatever it is, and you would bring in ten thousand. Yes. Does that sound so far away? No. Doesn't sound far away. Doesn't sound right. I mean, what if you could make a CD and make a music CD and sell a thousand of them? Right? That hard. I used to sell honey. I went door to door selling honey, and I ended up getting a bicycle from it. They ended up me selling a lot of honey for them. I got a free bicycle out of it. I sold spaghetti dinners. I got a free. Uh, uh, flashlight big one so I mean it wasn't that hard I just had to choose to get into it and my mother helped me out she wrote down the script for me to get on the phone and I called around I said, would you like to? it was our church I said would you like to get in and get us to get in? we got tickets yes no when would you like them we set up a delivery I must have sold over a hundred tickets but no, everybody else sold big ten I was so far ahead of everybody, they had to give me the first prize. So 
it's like we our mind makes things too hard. And guess what? Guess what? You're working at your job. How much do you think your your the owner of your business is making? He's leveraging off of all the people in your job, right? And he's got to have a capital to keep the business going. But once that capital is free and clear, and they've just taken and they're growing and whatever they're doing, then he's going to get take a draw for himself. What do you think that draw is going to be? <laughs> right? Think it's going to be a lot? How about you think he can go on vacation for a little while, or whenever he feels like it? Oh yeah, definitely. Does anybody say no? I know my boss does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's one of the advantages of becoming an entrepreneur. And guess what? We didn't talk about all the tax advantages. Ooh I tell you right now, you that you open up them deduction doors because the t IRS wants businesses to make income so they can tax. Okay. They want, so guess what? They're going to do what they can to facilitate business in order to create more income. Because if they create more income, then they can create more taxable income. Okay? All right. So the whole idea, and that's why employees don't get as much deductions as a business. So guess what? One of the first things you got to do is, what kind of a home-based business do I want to start? Because I'll tell you what. <laughs> it it will pay off. It will it it'll get it'll get you going. Even you know, even if you only sold a few things, those deduction doors could. It's like they'll bring your taxable income down. Like if you make thirty thousand or thirty five, and your taxable income's been brought down to twenty five because of deductions. Guess what? You're gonna pay tax on twenty five thousand instead of thirty five. You got my drift. So starting a business, getting your, you know, we can talk more detail about starting a business. We have a product, a building confidence. We can uh, talk about that later. If you would like to find out more products uh, or more, uh, just click on that button over there and we'll take you to an email. You just give us your email so that way we can get back to you and we can give you more interesting uh, uh, information and help you out in your journey towards becoming an entrepreneur and buy and make sure that you write that vision down. Don't delay it because as long as it's in your head, it will never get legs. You got to bring, you have to let it be birthed and you have to write it down and then you have to put legs to it, start praying over it, confessing it and trusting God to bring it to pass. And Jesus, and let, let, uh, you know what, Pastor Aiden, let's pray over all the people right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your strength. Well, we know that we can do nothing without you. But you've said that, that you would bless your people and that you love the prosperity of your saints. And, that, and you're our good father that wants to bless his children. We're not looking to become rich. We're not looking to be, you know, we're not looking to become rich to become rich. We're looking to become, we, we want to be the best we can be and as free as we can be so we can do more for you in your kingdom. And we know that it goes hand in hand. Okay? So we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And those that don't believe that, you know, God doesn't want us to be, there's a verse that says God enjoys the prosperity of his servants. He enjoys it. And just like, you know, a father with their children, they love to see them uh, doing well. My, my son was talking to me about a promotion that he may be getting soon. That made me glad. Okay, why, why, why do we think that God's not the same? All right. All right, God bless. Take care and have a great night. Uh, uh, let me stop the share. Bye. <laughs> and we'll say bye, Pastor Adrian. Say bye. Bye. All right. God bless. Okay. Thank you.